Evening, everyone. Hope everyone's good tonight. Getting ready for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Uh, my name is Joel Kaplan. I am the Associate Dean for Grad Programs at the Newhouse School and uh, uh, very excited to be with you today. Also with me is Martha Coria, who's the Assistant Director of the Grad Office. And she kind of arranged all this and is a uh, is, uh, is, uh, is the Oz behind the curtain, so to speak. And so you're some of you have I, I've already met because you've been some been through some of our virtual sessions or been to our our, our actual open house. But um, we're very pleased to invite you to hear about our, our sports communication track in our graduate program. So if you're interested in television, radio, and film broadcast and digital journalism or magazine news and on uh, and digital journalism and public relations then um, we've got a track for you and I'm really happy to uh, introduce Olivia Stomsky who's a faculty member at the Newhouse School I like to call her the hardest working faculty member at the Newhouse School because not only does she teach and, and run the Sports Media Center, but she's actually out there doing things every weekend or most every weekend. And she usually is flying to California and then flying back on a red eye. And uh, so I live vicariously through her. I say, hey, what football game are you going to? What basketball game? What little league are you going to? So it's, it's fun. And uh, she, I'm sure she'll want to tell you a little bit about that. But uh, she also has students hanging out in her office from the morning, noon, and night as well. So what she's going to do is she's going to talk about the tracks and how it works out with your, um, your programs. Martha and I will kind of just be lurking around here because when Olivia is done, if you have any um, uh, questions for us, at least in terms of the application process or even financial aid, although we are having our own uh, a separate financial aid discussion on December 2nd and... Um, there's going to be a student panel on Monday night, right? Martha? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so there'll be a student panel this coming Monday night. And then on December 2nd, we'll be doing the uh, uh, panel on uh, application process financial aid. But if you're here and you have a burning question, we're happy to answer that as well. So with that, I'm going to turn everything over to Olivia. It, it's your show now, Olivia. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Dean Kaplan. It's great to see all of you. I think some of you I've met before um, and some I'm seeing for the first time. So um, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna give you a ton of information, but don't worry, I'm gonna give us time um, to um, ask questions in the end. So as I um, share my screen here, please let me know if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me along the way. So I always like to say, let me tell you a little bit about myself so you can decide if you care about anything I have to say afterwards. Um, as far as you know, they could have just found me on the street, like, you know, selling roses and they thought, hey, she seems interesting. Let's have her come talk. Um, I am originally from San Diego, California. Anyone from or in California right now or on the, the West Coast at all where it's warmer, it's so cold here today, but okay. Um, Originally from San Diego, California, um, I always wanted to be a sports producer. When you become grad students, you'll hear that story of, of all things. How did a seven-year-old girl decide she wanted to become a sports producer? Um, and so when it was time for me to decide where to go to school, um, there was no question that Newhouse was top of that list. Um, and so I did my undergrad here. I started my career at Fox Sports in Los Angeles. I tend to be um, more comfortable being a small fish in a big pond. Uh, I was an athlete growing up. And so I had coaches and, and my dad always said, you, if you don't compete against the best, you'll never be the best. So that was kind of how I felt in that along the way. So um, when I was at Fox Sports, I started in features. So that's a little bit long form, produced uh, Clippers uh, studio shows for pregame, halftime and postgame shows. I traveled with the Lakers for five years. Um, and then I started back, I went back into the documentary side um, and started working on shows like Before the Bigs and In My Own Words. Um, I have earned six Emmys and four of them are for storytelling. I love the idea of the athlete, human interest. I like to humanize people um, and I'm always interested in that. 
So from there, went on to ESPN, and that's where I currently still am along the way um, with Newhouse. So I am what they call a professor of practice, which means I still work in the industry. I still produce and or direct anywhere from 85 to 90 games a year. And that's important to me. I teach, no surprise, sports production here at Newhouse. I will produce or direct a game on a Saturday, and I have class on Monday. And I want our students to be able to say, hey, you know, except I will say one year I missed a commercial break in the fourth quarter of a college football game. And as soon as I walked in on Monday, a hand went up and said, did you miss a commercial break? And I was like, too soon. Yes, too soon. I made a mistake and you caught it. Awesome. I'm proud of you, but too soon. Um, and so I always thought I would come back, uh, to Newhouse. I love Newhouse. Um, Newhouse creates savages. And I mean that in the best way possible. Um, this is a competitive school. And it has an alum, a list of alumni that is not only impressive, but is somewhat intimidating. This place will teach you that you can be and do much more than you ever considered that you could. There will be times where you're like, I can't, and I don't know, and you will keep going. And that is the best part. You will learn that you can be competitive and supportive at the same time. The grad program very much is a family when it comes to the sports media um, and communication track. Dean Kaplan mentioned that I often have several students in my office and that is the case. Um, there are students that just don't wanna go back outside or have an hour that will come in my office and, and there's a big part. This is my little office and then we have a, a center. Big TVs, comfortable chairs, do your homework, yell at each other about the game. What is What does coach Babers need to do? Cause you know, we're all better football coaches than actual paid millions of dollar football coaches because we all have the answers, right? I mean, that's what sports fans are. So um, that, you know, Newhouse teaches you that. And so I always thought I'd come back here. Um, I didn't, I thought I'd retire. Like when I retired, I'd come back and maybe teach. I didn't think I'd come back at 37, but I'm glad that I did. Um, and there's several reasons why um, and what I do here. So let me talk to you a little bit about that. I am the director of the Newhouse Sports Media Center. So what is the difference between the Newhouse Sports Media Center and the Sports Media Communication Track? Well, the Sports Media Center oversees the track. Um, we really work to connect our students with alums, uh, with industry professionals. We oversee industry partnerships. We have in just the few last few years, we partner with The Athletic, we partner with New York uh, Post, Little League, Major League Baseball, um, I should look, I have them all written on top of, of here. Um, we also oversee a sports documentary uh, production company that's called 44 Films. Um, we send students to the NHL All-Star Game to be reporters. The Newhouse Sports Media Center oversees all of that. We also have a speaker series where we bring in, um, if not weekly, every other week, speakers uh, for our students, completely free. And not all alums, but majority of them are in this industry. There's more than enough Syracuse and Newhouse alums, let's be honest. Um, but from a variety of backgrounds. So we're talking, um, you know, writers, filmmakers, play-by-play, -play, sideline reporters, producers, directors. These are all people that we bring in almost weekly to speak with our students. And so the center oversees that. And then finally, we oversee the sports media and communication track. So what is the sports media and communication track? The first thing I want to make sure everyone knows, because this is always a question, this is not something extra. You don't have to pay more for this. You don't have to have more classes than your friends that are not sports. You just are utilizing your electives and some of your time to be a sports student. So what does this mean? Well, the only time you do something more than your counterparts that are not in sports is during that summer boot camp. You'll be spending Wednesday nights with me. We have um, SMC, which is Sports Media Communication, 601. Uh, this is a pro seminar. This is where you have a chance every Wednesday night we get together and we meet all of the other professors that teach in sports media and communication so that you have a better idea of what are the classes and electives that you have? What are the expectations? What can you learn? Do you vibe with that professor or not? It might be a topic that you've never heard of. We also bring in several people, representatives from places to intern here on campus or near here on campus. 
We have a partnership with Sports Illustrated. Um, several of our students write for SI.com um, as their internship. Uh, members of the athletic department will come and speak with us to make sure that we understand what the op opportunities are there. Uh, ACC Network will come and speak with you about getting involved with the ACC Network. I oversee the live studio shows for ACC Network. Um, every school has a, in the ACC has the, the ACC Network on their campus. Um, same with the SEC. We are the only school, not just in the ACC, but the only school that has live studio shows from our facilities. Our students produce, direct, host, and are on air for live studio shows. We're the only ones. How and why is that the case? Well, I also work at ESPN. So not only am I making sure that we have the same quality, I know our students can, can deliver the ESPN professional quality shows, but our facilities are beautiful. I oversee them to make sure that everything looks the same and, and is um, you know, on, on character for ESPN. We have about 40 studio shows a year, 40 studio shows a year. Um, we are still in our first semester and six grad students have already been on air for our studio shows. So I just wanna throw that out there as possibilities for our grad students um, that, it, that that does happen for you guys. So, um, but you'll learn about how to get involved with that when it comes to the pro seminar. We have connections with Lemoyne and OCC, which are uh, Colgate and Cornell as well, sending students to call play-by-play -play, um, and be analysts and sideline reporters there. And so you will learn how to you know, get those opportunities as well. Um, how to get involved with 44 Films if you're a filmmaker, how to get involved uh, across the board with Syracuse.com, things like that. We also go to a baseball game together, which is really fun, but okay, carry on. I'm, I don't, I don't know if Dean Kaplan knew that I did that. So um, that's my favorite class time and it's really fun. Okay, so uh, what else? You will be required to take six credits in electives. Six credits total, not each semester, six credits total in electives. I see you, Dean Kaplan. You can come with us to the baseball game this summer. Um, so I, you- I did, I was disappointed. I must have been out of town. You were. It's my favorite thing. I know it is. I wish we could go to a Cubs game. That's really fun. All right. <laughs> Next year, you have no problem getting tickets for that. So that yeah, is. that's true. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So you choose what your electives are. Now, one of the great things, there are several of them, but one of the great things about the sports media and communication track is, in general, if you are a BDJ student, you take BDJ classes. If you are TRF, you take TRF classes. If you are MND, you take MND classes. As a sports media and communication track student, you can take any of the sports media and communication track classes that you will succeed at. So there are some classes that you need to know how to edit. If you can prove that you'll be successful, if you know how to edit and from other classes and you'll be successful in that class, we can get you into that class. Why is this great? Because many of us go in thinking, I think I wanna be a producer, but it might be fun to try on air. Well, then let's find you if you decide to be a TRF, can you take some BDJ classes where you can get some reps at being in front of a camera or vice versa? Many, many of the BDJ students take the production class, which is an SMC class. Many of them do. So you can do that. You are required to take one credit internship. So it's for minimum of 45 hours. There's not a maximum. It's a minimum of 45 hours. I always suggest you do that over the fall or the spring. Many students do it over the spring because the fall, you're kind of getting your sea legs of being a grad student and deciding what you want to do. It's a one credit internship that you will take during the school year. Okay. We do require you to be involved in campus media, but there are more opportunities than there are students. I promise you. So whether you're involved in the ACC network studio shows, if you're involved with Citrus TV, if you're involved with the news house, if you're involved with, um, Z89 or WAER, that is your campus media. The DO, that is your campus media. You're required to attend a minimum of five speaker events uh, per semester. Um, they aren't, they don't have to be sports um, 
hosted by our office. There are a few, as long as they're sports related that come through. We had one with the um, law school here last week. Um, the sports Newhouse Sports Media Center was able to partner with the law school to put on a great speaker series that actually was held um, at the law school those would count as well. Um, and remember, we bring in speakers almost every week. So those getting five in is, is not difficult at all. And then you are required to do a capstone in sports media. That's three credits completed, either summer one or two. Why does it say summer one or two? Well, with BDJ students, it's summer It's summer session two. Um, and with TRF and MND, it's going to be summer session one. So it can be either one. Um, and we'll work towards that. Um, many of our students, just as a show of hands for those of you that I can see, how many of you are thinking BDJ? Okay. Uh, um, okay, almost everyone. How about TRF? Okay, got it. Those are my producers. I love that. Um, writers, MND. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, and then I think you all raise your hand. I, I'd say PR, but I think we're we're out of hands. Anyways, yeah, PR. Okay. Um, so to to give it quickly, there's many of you are BDJ. Um, BDJ can go do your capstone in DC. If you do your capstone in DC, you would have an alternate sports assignment in order to finish your sports media communication track. We also have a partnership with NFL and Nextstar that I've worked really hard. Uh, we send two reporters to serve as training camp reporters for football teams. We have um, a connection with the Indianapolis Colts, um, the Bills, Green Bay Packers and the Patriots as of now. We're still looking to add quite a few teams to that. Um, and so you can do your capstone as a training camp reporter as well. So that's a possibility um, for, your, for your capstone or you get a job or you do your capstone at any place that you'd like. Um, similar TRF, you would do your capstone any place you'd like. Um, Oftentimes our TRF students will go to uh, MLB Network or the NBA or ESPN Next program to finish their capstones um, in more of the production side of things. And then MND, you have a big capstone and then yours is just um, centered more around sports. Your, your assignment within the capstone of all MND students would be sports as that section, but we'll get there. All right, so let's talk about some of the fun stuff. Um, some of the fun stuff is that connection between the alumni and the students. Um, we love the fact that we are orange. You, if you don't know somebody that is from Syracuse or went to Syracuse, when you meet one of us, it is the top three things you will find out about us. I know it's annoying. You will be annoying as well. We can't help it. It just happens. We're so proud to be alums of Syracuse and especially of Newhouse. So any chance that we can, we have a lot of alums that want to come back. What does that mean for us? Well, that means that they're there and want to help you. They want to make that connection with our students. How can they help you with looking at your reel, looking at your resume, giving you advice, getting to know you, helping with job opportunities, um, watching a film that you did or a feature and giving you feedback. So we have quite a few um, alums that are here often. Uh, Mike Trico is here every semester, uh, several times a semester. Beth Moen's family still lives here. So she's here quite a bit as well. Um, Sean McDonough comes back at least twice a year. Bob Costas is here usually about once or twice a year as well. And that's just the ones that are on our Mount Rushmore. Um, Jason Benetti is here quite often. Rob Ford, who is the voice of the Houston Astros, um, is graduated the same year I did. So he tries to come back once a year. Um, and this is not just come and speak in a big auditorium. As you can see from these photos, it is an opportunity for our students to make a connection with our alums. We love it. We want to keep growing. All of us as alums worked really hard to get the, the reputation of Newhouse to be what it is. We wanna make sure that you continue with that reputation and how can we help you succeed so that you're able to keep up with that reputation and, and be successful in life. That's what we wanna do. And we wanna make sure that you have that insight for them. All right, so again, the track is available in BDJ, uh, MNO or MND, uh, TRF and PR, okay, PR. 
Um, we have had one advertising student. It is not formalized. So if you have an advertising student in, in the room, um, I wouldn't, I would say start consider it as well, um, but it's not a formalized program. So what are some of the electives that you can take? I hate to break this to you. This is only some of the classes. Um, you know, how many, anybody been to In-N-Out or at least heard of In-N-Out? We've heard of In-N-Out Burger, right? What, one of the reasons it's successful other than the fact that it's absolutely delicious. D. Kaplan, fan? Oh yeah, me too. Well, I'm from California, so I get it. There's only like three things on the menu. So you, they're really, really good at that. Then again, we could go to Cheesecake Factory and have 47 pages of a menu and they're pretty good too. Well, I don't know which one's right, but we've got quite a bit. We're a little bit more like Cheesecake Factory than we are like in and out when it comes to our options. But we wanna make sure that our students are being served. If you're interested in something, let us create a class for you and make sure that it's taught by the experts in that industry. So for example, we are the first school to have an esports and media class, first ever to have an esports and media class. That comes from students coming to us and saying, hey, I'm interested in esports. How do you make money on it? Um, how do you, where's the money come from? Um, so we created that. Students come to me and say, I wanna make a 30 for 30. I love 30 for 30. I binge watch 30 for 30s. Well, let's create a sports documentary class. So um, these are just some of the classes. One of the changes that I made when I took over is that every professor that teaches in the sports media and communication still works in the industry. That's important. Why is that important? It's because you are learning what's happening in control rooms, in trucks, in studios, in networks, in teams right now. Not what was happening 15 years ago, not the theory of what was happening, not the research and this is the right now. And so for an example, radio sports broadcasting is taught by Matt Park, who's the voice of the orange. He calls all of our radio and basketball um, here. Sports column writing and broadcast um, commentary is taught by Rich Samini, who is the beat writer, uh, Jets beat writer for ESPN. He drives up all the way from New York City every week to teach this class because he loves being an alum and loves our students. I clearly teach sports production. Um, this again is just a part of the list. Sports reporting is taught by sports director, Stephen Fonte. Um, I teach this class that's called the Sports Media Project and Pitch, which is very um, marketing and, and content based. So this is just a, a few of the classes that we offer for our students to get that opportunity. So we also make sure that our students have opportunities outside of the classroom. So looking at ACC network, um, the three students in the middle were the on-air students, uh, all grad students in this picture. Um, we had an all grad uh, broadcast that day, which was really a great show. We also have opportunities producing and behind the scenes. You could produce uh, and or direct live shows. Uh, we had a student last year who, because she had produced and directed so many live shows for, for um, ACC Network. When she graduated, she started her career with the um, Pittsburgh Steelers as their lead studio producer. That's a 35-year-old person's job, not a I just graduated last week person's job. But because she had so many live games on ESPN platform on her resume, she outshined people that had been in the industry for five years. Um, this is all opportunities that we create for our students along the way to make sure that you are ready, that you are there, that you get these um, opportunities to see it. Our students also have opportunities to cover games. Um, we have credentials for every uh, Syracuse University athletic event possible so our students can uh, report from those games. We also uh, have them you know, if you have something that you want to go to, I had one student who was very interested in MMA. We got them involved in Bellator events um, around town and so what they were able to connect with. So people always think, well, okay, what are some of the things that other students have done while they were there? This is just a small list of a few of the places that our students have interned while they were grad students here at Newhouse. Um, many of you go to MLB Network, the Syracuse Mets, um, ESPN, obviously, ACC Network, the Newshouse, uh, MLB.com. These are all companies and, and partners that we have with um, the 
in the network or the team directly. So these are all opportunities that our students have done, our grad students have done and worked with while they were still students here. Okay. Um, so the last little thing that I, I want to tell you is our students are also welcome at all of our big events. We host the Glickman Awards every year. Um, that's jam-packed with alums. It's our biggest award ceremony um, that we have here at New for the New House Sports Media Center. We're part of the Concussion Institute Sports Matters programs where we talk about, uh, we have panels that discuss the intersection of social issues within the sports industry. Um, we have a mentorship program connecting our current students, especially our grad students with um, alums uh, that's personalized. And we wanna make sure that our students have the ability to see a diverse uh, group of speakers and guests along the way. All right, so um, I'm going to, this one doesn't read as well. I will put in chat my email address if you don't have it. Um, if you have any questions along, um, it would be now that I will take any questions. If you wanna just use the raise your hand, um, that would help me to see who might have questions. Or did I give you all the, am I that good? That I gave you all the information you possibly need. You're like fully um, inspired and that's it. Dean Kaplan, do you have any questions? Oh, I have one question, yay. Oh, hi, Paulina. Hi, Professor Stomsky. My name is Paulina and I'm a senior at Syracuse now and I'm also on the volleyball team. And I actually have a question. Have you had any student athletes before in your program? I have, I have student athletes now in my program. Um, so I have had quite a few student athletes. I think I have the most student athletes this year than I've had in a long time. Um, I have two women's basketball players and a football player. I also have um, one track and field. She's a runner. Um, I will say this, the BDJ program, is very demanding on your time and schedule. So being an athlete is oftentimes difficult to manage the BDJ program, but it's happened before. Two years ago, I had a, a women's basketball player go through the BDJ program. Um, so it is possible for BDJ. Uh, TRF tends to be a little more forgiving when it comes to schedules and the amount of space that you have. Um, and really it's just because of the kind of classes you're taking. Oftentimes in the BDJ classes, they're going to be reporting. And so you need to be out getting interviews and, and telling stories that happens when you, during the day and, and stuff like that. So um, I have had several athletes, um, the fo uh, football player I have this year is in the BDJ program and he's, he's making it happen and it's not, easy for him, but if we over communicate on our schedules and we ask for help when we need it, it's definitely doable. But um, yes, that, that is a great question. It's been, it's happened before and it's happening now even more. Thank you. Of course, any other questions? Yeah, I would just add on the, on the athletes because, you know, the, the women basketball players, for example, it's because of the, you know, the grad portal or the portal right now. And so, they, and especially with COVID, they get another year of eligibility. So, and, and with the football players, almost all the football players are here five years anyway. So the really smart ones have finished their undergraduate degree and then they can they can get a, a, a master's within their scholarship amount. So. Right, right. And why wouldn't you? I mean, if you had the opportunity to get a master's, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, but it's, you know, it's great. I will say it, it, Having athletes in my program just means I have to go to more sporting events. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I got women's um, season ticket, women's basketball season tickets this year. It's the first time I had women's basketball season tickets, but I had to, I've got students and, and, you know, we, as I said, we are a family in a sportive group. So as soon as we found out that they were in, it's like, well, looks like I'm uh, going to be at every women's game too. So I already go to every football game. Um, I got to get myself to some track and field events, but it's really cold and I don't know. They can tell me about it later. I don't know how to do that. But any other questions? All right, yes. Hey, Dr. Hey, Professor Stromsky. Um, my name is Enoch and I'm from Washington State University. I'm a senior. Um, the question I had was just based on like the beats for students. Um, would you, is it, is it is like are students allowed to cover various sports or do you choose one particular sport and stick to it? 
Wait, I ask me the end of that. Do students get to choose what sports they cover? Yep, or do or do they do various sports? Oh no, students choose what sports they cover. Um, and so what we do is oftentimes at the beginning of the year. I will send out, so for example, let's take football. I'll send out an email and say, if you want to request credentials to cover a home football game, first come, first serve, send me your email, you know, and we will do a schedule. I try to get everyone that wants to cover a football game a credential. I have several students that love soccer and they want to be the beat reporter and create content solely around soccer. So it doesn't make sense for me to force you to cover football if you love so soccer. So football and football, get it? See what I did there? Football. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I'm I'm a lot more funny in my head. Um, and so you can choose what sports you want to cover. Uh, it's the same thing with a lot of the opportunities for internships. Our students that are that write for SI.com, they you apply for a specific beat for that sport. So you could apply to be the um, women's hockey beat reporter for SI, you would apply for the men's lacrosse, you wouldn't just apply and then be assigned it. We want to make sure that you are getting what you want out of the program. Did I answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I, I think another aspect of his question was, if I heard it right, was that even once you choose a sport, you, you're not stuck just doing that sport, you can expand, you can do all sorts of different sports, so you can go you can be a journalist. A lot of our students want to be able to learn how to call all sorts of different sports. Right. Right. Well, then I, I always use this example. Also, if you, if you're interested in a sport that, that isn't played here at Syracuse university, don't be afraid to tell me. Um, I had a student four years ago who I alluded to earlier, who was very, very much into MMA. Um, and, that's what he wanted to cover. And so we, I made a connection with Bellator and we were able to get him credentialed for, I think, I think Jose covered eight events as media and our grad students, especially you're not student media. When you are reporting, you are media. And so we were able to credential him for Bellator events all over New York state. Um, I've had students that I have a student who's interested in wrestling. And so that's something that, you know, when, when there's close a wrestling event, that's close enough to be here. Um, I had one student who was involved, very much involved in, um, skiing events. And so she did the work and researched any competitions that were near and we we're able to do that as well. So, um, don't feel as if you are locked into only sports that are played here. There are opportunities and I'm willing to at least attempt to get you credentialed. I sent, I sent two students, grad students this year to uh, Cooperstown to cover the hall of fame uh, baseball events. And to be honest, it would, you know, the connection there was for them to, you know, see number two and write about it and interview. And that was a great opportunity for them. And we have connections at Cooperstown. And so um, it doesn't necessarily have to just be Syracuse football that you're covering day in and day out. No other. I think Carlos uh, Correa said that uh, number two is overrated. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that think that. Sydney. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Um, so I'm a senior at Lehigh University and my, um, I actually know Eric Slater, the football player that you're referring to. And I know Kayla Burton came through the program a while yeah. back too. But um, a question that I wanted to ask for you is like Lehigh is a predominantly print media kind of school. And like, what would you recommend really, if anything, um, for this like next semester of myself to prepare for like the broadcast side of journalism? I love that question. Um, first of all, I love Lehigh area. It's beautiful. You have some good restaurants. Um, I've, I've been there a couple of times for different things. Um, it's going to sound silly, but what do I suggest for you to prepare? I suggest you start talking to yourself more than you do now. That's what I suggest. Um, you need to get comfortable hearing your own voice. You need to put your, your cell phone on a dresser or on a bookshelf, look into it and talk about anything. When you're driving in your car, talk about anything. Give me a recap of what you saw, um, what is interesting. You need to start finding your voice. Second, consume, consume, consume. 
I had a, a, a professor ask me yesterday, how many games do I, or do I watch in a week or at least parts of a game do I watch in a week? And I said, probably 30, easily 30. Now that may seem like a lot, but think about it. You watch Red Zone, you're watching, you know, how many of you can you, can you jam in on just a Sunday, let alone during the week? Well, why do I watch that many games? Because I'm paying attention. I'm watching it like a professional. Do I like the way the reporter said this or said that? When they do, I write it down. Do I see a graphic that I like? Could I make that graphic better? Was a replay sequence something that I, I liked? I Yes, I am a sports fan. I love sports. I don't necessarily watch sports that often as a spectator because I'm thinking about it as a professional. I'm listening. What makes somebody interesting? What makes them not interesting? Are they speaking too quickly? Do Are they using slang? We here at Newhouse say, talk about sports the way people that talk about sports talk about sports. Think about that, okay? So for example, we don't say you scored a free throw, you made a free throw. These are things that we might accidentally say because we're nervous or because we aren't talking to ourselves. Do all that now. Start feeling comfortable hearing your own voice, seeing yourself, get confident in that. Um, don't do anything with it. Don't put it on YouTube. Don't let other people see it just in case, right? We want to make sure that when you're out there and you're exposed that you're good. So let's get you here and get you good. And then we'll start putting stuff out there. But those are the two things I would say. Watch as much as you can, but pay attention to who you like. What do they do? Um, what don't you like? So that by the time you get here, you have an idea of what is your dream job in five years? And what kind of person do you want to be? Who do you want your, you know, what do you want your brand to be? Those are all things that we, you know, that I think you should be doing or could be doing right now that'll make you better by the time you get here. Okay. Can I add something? On that? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so Sydney and everyone here, actually, the way we have our program structured, um, which is everyone, our professional program structure, everyone comes in the summer for a boot camp for six weeks. And the idea behind the boot camp is because everyone does have different experiences. Some of them have been broadcast journalists and undergrads, some are just communication, some are people who got a strong liberal arts education at a school like Lehigh and they're political science majors or, or uh, philosophy majors. So they have different skills. So everyone comes in with different skills. The idea of boot camp is to even the playing field. Okay, so that when you come in, it doesn't matter that you have no broadcast journalism experience. In fact, I would say a majority of, of the students will have no broadcast journalism. But by the time you come out <laughs> of boot camp, everyone's kind of on the same level now. Now you can go, and so they, they emphasize radio reporting uh, in boot camp, and then everyone's ready to start doing television reporting in the fall, and everyone's kind of on the same level. The other thing I would point out as a print person is the ability to write well will serve you amazingly well as a broadcast journalist because good writing transcends the medium. And if you're a good writer, you're going to be a great broadcast journalist. And, and I think sometimes broadcast journalists and sometimes sports people think I don't really need to be a good writer because I'm just talking, but the two go hand in hand. So I, I, I would just tell you that we've had successful people from Lehigh and other schools. They've come in, they've had strong liberal arts background. It's true. You know, they come to from SUNY Geneseo or from other places. They come with a general background and a, a passion for sports, and then we'll give you the tools to be able to do that. Any other questions? Does anyone have questions? I'm totally putting you guys on the spot. I think this is what I'm supposed to do. Does anyone have questions for Dean Kaplan or Martha that you now have their, their captive audience you might <laughs> ask? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine here at Blackhawks. I'm playing tonight, so I'm in no hurry. And uh, when we're done here, I'm going to be, uh, I got my leftover dinosaur barbecue from last night. So I'm looking forward to that. Another nice. thing that you'll be eating when you get to Syracuse, right? Definitely will. Daniel, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Hi. Um, seems like I might have jumped the gun a little bit. I'm a uh, senior in high school. Um, and I need to <laughs> but uh, It goes I, fast, man. Yeah, I, uh, I was just uh, joining and I was uh, 
I mean, it was interesting, but really not what I was expecting. Um, but I was wondering if you had any suggestions for what I could do as an undergraduate to kind of, um, I'm looking to major in BDJ and- uh, Are you coming to Newhouse? Yes. Oh, well then well, I'll just see you in a couple of months. I mean- Well, I'm an applicant, know. hopefully I'll be there, but uh, yeah. So there's a sports media track. Well, they're, 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 it's in progress, but there's pretty much a sports media track on the undergraduate level as well. So you, you should find yourself in good company, I think. All right, thank you. It's a great question, by the way. And yeah. start buying your orange stuff now as soon as you're yeah. <laughs> Trust me, you'll be fine. All right, we have one more question. Um, hey, Dean Kaplan, um, this is for you. Um, I'm an international student, and um, I wanted to know how the process of me applying and like trying to get, because financial aid doesn't apply directly to me. Just want to know like the financial aspect of how it's going to play if I come to Syracuse. So you're correct in, in, in half of what you're saying. So when you apply um, to the grad program, they'll, you'll be able to check whether you want to be considered for merit scholarships or for what we call either what you probably knew is teaching assistant but we call it instructional associates because a lot of full-time faculty teach all our classes but we help deliver on the undergraduate curriculum we get we we hire ias so you would check those and we we can give out some merit aid we don't give out any four eyes because we like to spread it out where, where, where you have the issue is a need-based aid because american students or you know u.s students uh, can apply for various types of loans. International students can apply for those loans. Um, so then you have to kind of find alternate ways of funding. And, and I think Martha can tell you a little bit more about that. The, the problem is that to get accepted, you have to be able to prove that you can afford to come. And so it sometimes can be a little bit of a catch-22. Okay, so um, let's say I decide to, because the one I'm more... Um, just based on like the BSc here with the graduate students I know, most of them use the assistantship method. So just let's say if I plan on using that method, will it be an easy thing for me to do? Master, did you get that? So like um, if I decide to use the assistantship method, that's, that's like a possibility, right? I don't, what is it that you wanna use? I didn't catch that. Yeah, so I know there's the, um, there's the um, awards given based on merits, and then there's also the assistantship method. Um, I was trying to know more about the assistantship method, trying to get a space in Syracuse. So we, Newhouse School, we offer merit-based awards, and then you can combine that with any kind of other resources that you have. So if you have uh, an external scholarship or your own personal resources, uh, the International Services Office will consider all of those things when they're determining whether you've met the, you know, the right criteria to issue the I-20 to you. So I know our international students come with a variety of different, uh, you know, aid and resources uh, before they attend. So you can combine those things. Uh, we can help you to determine how much needs to be shown. We do a cost breakdown on the website that I update every year. So you can take a look at that. But uh, we do our best to let you know about any merit awards at the time you are admitted. So we, we try to make those decisions early to let you know so you have an idea. Great. Okay, um, Michael. Hi, how's it going? Thank you for having this session. I wasn't able to make the open house uh, last week. I was a little busy, so I apologize. But um, two questions I had. I'm a, I'm a senior sport analytics student here at Syracuse, trying to dip my toes in the BDJ side of things. Um, and it seemed like you answered the question earlier, but I, I wanted to confirm uh, that BDJ 510 course, Topics and Specialized Practices, has undergraduate prereqs on the Syracuse course catalog. But I also know that the program doesn't require any like past experience in BDJ. And my first question was just to confirm if the boot camp kind of levels the playing field and eliminates that prereq. Um, I'm assuming you're shaking your head. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's, I'm going to take that as yes. <laughs> and um, my second question was uh, regarding the Forever Orange scholarship uh, while we were talking about financial aid. Is there any indication that that will be something that will continue 
for next year or is that a 2021 unique occurrence? So Michael, every day I wake up expecting an email from the central administration telling us whether or not Forever Orange will continue. I, I'll tell you this kind of quasi off the record. If the, if the university doesn't do it, we will probably do it. So Hey, 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 we can't make promises. Here. I know, I said off the record, we can't make promises, but was, I didn't it hear was, it. I didn't yeah. hear it. No. But it was we, something we, they started in 2020, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was a little more crucial for, for those graduates. And then 2021, they decided to extend it. And so now that, um, you know, it was pandemic driven. So now it's kind of being reevaluated and uh, we're not sure. We had hoped to have a decision before now. So, yeah. yeah. You Notice how she corrects me and everything I say. So uh, I know that our Dean, Mark Lodato is in favor of continuing it. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. First, that the university will do it. But that if even if they don't do it, that we'll, that we'll figure out a way to do it. And for others who are wondering what this is, it is a discount given to for serious university undergraduates who choose to pursue a graduate program at SU, they receive um, a 50% discount in their tuition if they pursue that program the same year they graduate. So it's um, an attractive offer. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Michael. Hi, um, I have three questions. If I can answer them uh, pretty quickly. Um, one is how many students on average are in the program? I love that question. Um, I don't have an answer for you though. Okay. Um, uh, this is my fifth year. My first year that we were here, we had 22. This year we have 51. So okay. it's growing every year. Um, I haven't gone backwards in numbers, so um, it's growing every year. I can definitely tell you that, uh, which is great because every time there's more of you, well, then we get more classes and more professors for us. So that's and great. more resources and more resources. So um, there's your answer for now. I, I, we'll see. But my guess, I would I would give you a ballpark, not to give you a, a sports, um, but I would say somewhere between forty and sixty. Okay. Okay. Sure. Question um, number two. Question number two is: Do you guys offer graduate housing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Syracuse so, does offer graduate housing. Syracuse University. The university has limited graduate housing. Like the tech, you know, technically the campus housing is limited. Mm -hmm. And actually, about a mile and a half away from main campus, it's apartment style housing on South Campus, and there are frequent shuttle buses, so that is limited but we have ample off-campus housing that is often closer to new house. So we kind of have a residential slash commercial neighborhood surrounding our campus and there are a lot of different opportunities. So uh, it ranges from, you know, very upscale brand new quote luxury housing complexes to converted homes to apartments to converted schools and other buildings to apartments. So we've had students live everywhere and there's, you know, it's, um, again, wide price ranges and, uh, you know, students who have three, three roommates, students who live alone, it's, it's, there's a lot of options. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Number, th number three. <laughs> the third one is on those uh, brief course lists that I know you said was, was a lot. Um, was anything close to like uh, podcasting or anything of that nature to kind of teach kind of like the editing and on air kind of um, course? Yeah, so our radio sports broadcast um, class includes podcasting. Um, so for starters, uh, mm -hmm. we have a podcasting class here within our TRF department. And part of that is um, you in that podcasting class, it's actually taught by a sports podcaster. Um, so your so that's, podcast that's not in the broadcast journalism um, side of things. That's that would be the television. Okay. Yep, it's a, it is, it's a TRF class. But again, you can, as a sports student, you could take that and it would count. Um, and to be, when, when Professor uh, uh, Dean Kaplan says, off the record, kind of confident, we are also uh, looking at adding um, a podcasting cat class to understand the business of podcasting as well. So not just the performance side, but how do you advertise it, market it, actually make money at it, and then that develop a podcast. So um, I'm actually in, in development of that class. My hope is that that class will debut in spring of next year. So what is that? Spring of 2023? 20, 
I can't do that kind of stuff, guys. It stresses me out, but you know what I mean. Um, I just finally stopped call, started calling them semesters because I call them seasons. I'm like, all right, well, next season, we'll, and there I'm like, semester, semester, semester. I also tell my um, my professors to have a good show before class because I I don't, yeah, I'm like, all right, have a good show. I mean, class, have a good class, have a good class. Um, so those are really their, those options. I also want to tell you because you brought up the podcasting. We have a partnership with Galaxy Media. Um, so that's our, um, Galaxy Media is our ESPN radio here. Now, Galaxy Media has what they call Q Sports Talk, which is their Twitch channel. And oftentimes they are simul simulcast from the ESPN radio and Twitch running Twitch channel. We have what's called New House at Night, which we um, have just done a uh, dry run of and will be launching in the spring from seven to midnight. <laughs> Seven to midnight, five days a week, our students are broadcasting from Newhouse. It is a paid um, position, and they basically are bringing their podcasts to Twitch and ESPN Radio, um, you know, via Galaxy Media. So there, that's a possibility as well when it comes to that. Got it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bezad. Is that how you pronounce it? Bezad. Bezad, okay. Hi, Professor Stansky, and hi, Dean Kaplan. And good morning from Iran. It's 3 a.m. here. <laughs> and I'm very happy to be with you. Uh, I'm a soccer maniac, and I have been working in soccer media in Iran for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, my major concern is that uh, I almost have no experience or knowledge in basketball media or football media or hockey media, the, the sports that are loved in USA. <laughs> and I have almost no interest in them, just soccer. Uh, two things, uh, one is that, uh, can I concentrate on soccer media over there? And how do you assess my chances to get a job in soccer media as an international? After I, I love this. I love this question. So um, first of all, my first year uh, as the director of Newhouse Sports Media Center, I had an international student from, um, who had never been to a baseball game. I had the same thing here. I have a student from Pakistan who only loves cricket. That's it. She just loves cricket. She does not want to work in anything that's not cricket. Now, I get it. Um, we're working at getting her an internship at Sky, at Sky Sports in London because they're known for their cricket coverage. Um, so I've had a ton of soccer fans. Yes, you can work in just soccer. Uh, you will not be obligated to cover the other sports. We can teach you that. Now, what is the likelihood of you getting a job? Well, it depends on a lot of things. Um, it depends on what you want to do with soccer. If you're thinking play by play, your odds are going to be different than a sports writer that would be in soccer. Um, I had one student two years ago that's very much a soccer fan above all else. Um, he actually now works at ESPN on their soccer broadcasts. And so uh, on the production side of things. So soccer very much is a, a, a niche. Uh, or, um, and, and so you know, sometimes it's a little bit difficult as far as to give you, you know, a real answer on that, um, on understanding who covers soccer, where is the audience, what companies would you want, positions you're looking for in that. Um, but, you know, it is completely possible and that you can stay with soccer. Again, I mean, if, if we can keep one of our current students in, in cricket, we don't even play cricket here. At least we play soccer here. Um, then I think your odds are pretty good at being better at your coverage and better as a professional um, in the world of soccer and sports media. Um, so it's all possible. Um, we've had students that have interned with soccer teams um, all over um, the U S um, whether it be, you know, the, um, Red Bulls in New York city or, um, you know, so it, it's completely possible. And, and it's not uncommon that I have students that are not interested in basketball and football. It's totally normal. I get, I think I get at least one or two. I have two this year. One is from South Africa. The other is from Pakistan and both only want to talk to me about cricket. And so I've had to learn a lot about cricket, at least soccer I've produced before. I know soccer. Um, and so cricket is going to be my new favorite sport if these two students have their way. So 
Um, you know, it's all about looking for our opportunities too. Um, some of that will be on you to be looking for those opportunities while you're here. Um, get involved with the men's and women's soccer teams here on campus. Um, see how you can utilize our credentials and utilize our opportunities to cover and build your resume and your resume real when it's soccer based. Um, all of that can be done here. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. You're welcome. And I, I, don't, I don't know if you're up early Wait, if you woke up early or you stayed no, up late? I, mean, just, I, just, I just finished my show two hours ago, came mm -hmm. back home from television and I started this meeting. Okay, so you're up late, not, up, not woke up early. You you're stayed up late. All right, I like yeah. it. Well, uh, I will just also add for your edification that Professor Gutterman, one of our faculty members who teaches our, our media law class, is a huge soccer fan. And he always puts together an intramural soccer team, and he loves getting international students on that team because for some reason he thinks that international students play soccer better. I don't know where he got that idea from, but uh, I think it's an accurate <laughs> thing. So you could have that to look forward to as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Well, as I said, we'll have a, a, a panel on a Monday night, which will still be 3 a.m. for you, uh, uh, where we'll have students from all of our programs talking about their experience. And then on the December 2nd, again, we'll go through the application process. And for your information, if you don't know, application deadline is January 15th. Get that in there by then. We're going to let you know as soon as we possibly can whether or not you're in. So we'll look forward to um, uh, Professor Stomsky doesn't really doesn't read your applications for acceptance. The program directors do, but she gets very involved in in talking to, to students who are interested in sports to make sure that she can answer all their questions as well. Some of the program directors ask for my opinion. Yeah, well, yeah, because your opinion is very valuable. Thank you, Dean Kaplan. <laughs> Thank you. If you have any questions, please, I put my email address um, in the chat. Please send me an email. Um, if you have any questions, we can always set up a Zoom. I'm great at those one-on-ones or phone calls. Um, if you had a question that you maybe were too embarrassed to ask, it, I love those. Um, oftentimes students were like, I should probably know this answer, so I don't wanna ask it. And, but, feel free to reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. Um, and if you have any questions, concerns, oftentimes students don't know the difference between BDJ and TRF and they can't mm -hmm. decide all that, please don't hesitate. Send me an email. Um, we can set up a call or a Zoom. I'm happy to meet with you to answer your questions.